I think those five things are, and these may or may not be in order, um, but I'll but I'll but I'll defend them in order. So, and by that I mean I'll, 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 why I put them at the in this order. And the first one, and we, you and I have talked about this numerous times, is and we had a big rant with Matt Souza about it is a mm-hmm. is a clean gym, which includes updated equipment. Um, it is, and the reason why I put it first is because it's the first impression. Yeah. Someone walks into your gym, they they look. I've had we we recently updated our lobby area, got rid of a reception desk that we had in there for six or seven years, maybe six years. Yeah, that was kind least. of looking beat down and and look, our lobby looked great, but I got rid of it and we you know we put a um a freestanding table. Big bar. Big butcher block bar, but table, yeah. That that people can stand around where we're not separating our, our staff from the, the members. And then we put a table behind it so the members could come sit behind the, mm-hmm. that table. And it looks really cool up there. It does. Yeah. And I've had a number, I had the, 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 it's inviting. We had those. Yeah. It's inviting. That's yeah. right. Well said. I had those members from North Carolina or South Carolina come visit us recently. Um, and they've been crossfitting for a long time. They go to some good crossfits. One of them was Rhapsody CrossFit, which they knew really well. And Rhapsody, that, that he runs, that guy runs an amazing gym. He's got two locations now, maybe three, but he's badass. Um, so I considered it a real compliment. They said, "Man, we this is really nice in here." And so that's that, and that's what you want. You want inviting, and you want your your lobby to speak to um, kind of what you do as mm-hmm. an affiliate owner. So you got to have a clean gym. It's the, 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 you know, bathrooms need to be clean. Gym needs to be clean. You need to keep it clean on a regular basis. You need to figure out a way, whether you're paying some high school kid or whatever else, or paying one of your members or trading membership, you need to make sure, make sure that that, that place is clean. That's, that's important that people will leave you for that. Yeah. If you're paying you 150 to 250 bucks a month, they want clean shit. And organized. And organized. Well, yeah. that's right. Organized. Yeah. So it's got to be good, like feng shui, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Good flow. Yeah. Functionality has got to be on point. Right. And if it's not, then it's time to keep well, yeah. progress. And it shows you care, Matt. That was what Matt Susan said. It shows you care. And yeah. then, and you yeah. know there's a system in place. Um, the, the next thing I think, the second most important thing of the top five things is quality coaching. And but what I mean by quality coaching is that the, the, the people that you have, whether it's you or your coaches that you've hired, that you're putting in front of your members, they need to, to be able to deliver content um, in a meaningful way. And it also includes and that it should include a warm up, a good warm up, a good workout, good explanation, good assistance, being able to touch every single member that's in class. One of the things At that I do, is I actually kind of, and we talk about, everybody's talked about it, but I, but I borrowed it from you because you do it, you do, you do it very well. And members notice and the members compliment me on it. Um, making sure you're touching base with every single member in class. I go through my warm up. I go through um, the skill instruction, and when there's that period of time, so for example, if it's a lift um, where they're just warming up for the lift, I'll walk. I'll casually walk around, and it's, and I don't even have to hurry. I walk around and I and I you know look the person in the eye. I'll say good morning. Go, you know any issues? Anything? You know you know what you're doing. You know you know you know the weights you're going to use today. Those kinds of things. And that making that contact, I think, is super important. Yeah. Saying their name. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't worry stress about you know saying their name three times in class. It's you know, like you said, as long as you're you're touching them, right? You gotta, and, yeah. And just, the way I start it is, I check in. You know, how's everybody feeling? Mm-hmm. And I ask, I just ask for a very simple thumbs up, so so, and so. If it's yeah. like this, I know to go and talk to that person, not in front of the group, but also in an individual, and like, hey, what's going on? Is there something we need to adjust? Yeah, and, that's a that actually is a really good one, and people should take that tip from Jamie Lee. And that's all he does right at the beginning. Thumbs up, thumbs sideways, thumbs down. It's, it sets the flow of class and, and helps that person with the intention of what they're there to do. Right. And it's a trigger for you to know, okay, I need to give this person, I might need a scale for this person, yep. I might need to adjust this person, or this person might just need, you know, pep talk. Yeah. Um, so quality coaching. That's, and you know, I, and I think in terms of hiring a coach for you, for affiliate owners to think about in terms of quality coaching, certifications are nice. Mm-hmm. Um, emotional intelligence is the absolutely most important yeah. thing. Yeah. And if you don't know what emotional intelligence is, get a book on it, okay. read about, read about it, look it up. 
um, the ability to read uh, facial cues from customers, to read tone, body language, body language um, it just is the difference maker mm -hmm. in, in, in a coach. Um, and I'll say after that, um, it's just how nice the person is. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, we, we have coaches, you know, I, I'll talk about Levi cause he doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but Levi is, uh, a, uh, a, 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 he's a beautiful man. Yeah. Like, the guy's sculpted. Hell like, of an athlete too. The guy's sculpted like Adonis. He was in a, a football player at Indiana university, but he, and he's the son of a preacher too. Mm -hmm. Um, but he is the most soft-spoken guy we have in this gym. And it's in a, in, in one of our policies, cause we got a big area out there is like, you got to speak up. You have to be loud. Turn that volume up. And he doesn't. And that's okay mm -hmm. because he is so damn nice. I mean, he is the nicest guy and everybody, and he always has a smile and he always has a nice, a good thing to say. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he connects with everybody. He works the room still. It's like, it, it's, oh, in his, it's in his own format. He does. He's not loud, but he no. still works the room, which he, is, yeah, he does. Like you said, go back and it to works. Quality, like, quality. Like if I said, hey, you got to be able to speak like, like Levi wouldn't make the cut. Yeah. But he's a, he's a fantastic coach. Mm -hmm. He's my daughter who has anxiety issues um, will come to Levi's classes. Really? Yeah. She likes Levi. That's cool. She just she connects with him, and, and because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't scare her, and he's, you know, he's takes Not his time with her. No, and he looks intimidating because he's jacked. Right, but but when you get to know him, so he he just he's so kind, and you can see it; it exudes it anyway. But emotional intelligence, I mm -hmm. think, is is super important. Yeah. The third thing for affiliates, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna harp on this one a lot. Um, because I've, I've had multiple people recently say it that have joined our gym. We join your gym because of the hours you are open or the class times that you have available. And you, and as an affiliate owner, you need to make sure that you have as plentiful hours as possible. You need to figure out ways to do that. And there's lots of ways to do that. Mm -hmm. It's, you don't have to be there. Yeah, 16 hours a day. There's ways to do trades. There's ways to bring in uh, interns. Um, your gym, I feel strongly that when your gym is not having classes, that it should be during the day. If you do classes in the morning, classes in the evening, you close during the day. I think that's a detriment to your business. Not because people will come during that time. Believe me, our gym is... You know, you could shoot a cannon off Dead here. sometimes. Yeah, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. you could shoot a cannon off here. There's like three people in yeah. this, you know, in 12,000 square feet. Yeah. Two it, of them work it here. It doesn't matter. Ten people will join my gym because we're open yeah. from noon until 3. Yeah. Because some uh, one day I might want to come yeah. that time. Yeah. And they do eventually. Uh, and, they, you know, they do. And, you know, here or there. Yeah. But it's the perception that you're available yeah. during that time. They'll come, they'll pick their class time, you know, 4, 30, 5, 30 in the afternoon or 6 a.m. And they'll stick to that. Mm -hmm. But they want to know that they can come. There's also those times where, you know, an athlete or a member will, you know, typically have a 5 a.m. And maybe they got the day off and they want to yeah. sleep in. And then that's such a treat to come into the gym when it's quiet. Oh, yeah. and you can kind of have the free range no of the open gym. Let me add to that. So that's, mm -hmm. I want you to be open. Uh, these affiliates, I want, I want you to figure out a way to be open during the middle of the day. And, and you're not going to get a bunch of members of media to sign up. But over time, mm -hmm. they're going to pick your affiliate and, and because they're paying you a lot of money because you have that availability. And let me add to that, that Saturday and Sundays, you need to figure out how you can be open. Yeah. It, I, and, it, and I know some people, they don't, they don't want to work both weekend days. You don't have to, but you need to figure out a way that you offer classes and are open. We're open from, and this is something we, that we've done for probably now 12, 15 years, yeah. is open at you know, 8 a.m. We're open at 7 a.m. now on Saturdays, but 8 a.m. And we're open until about 2 o'clock o'clock, o'clock yeah. on Saturdays. On Sundays, we close at noon, but we're open at 8 a.m. And we have three or four classes and and we have open gym we have an area we can have open gym during that time and, and it's you and gym is busy as hell always full saturday mornings yeah is like church here yeah. it is chaos in here the energy is high everybody's in a great mood mm -hmm. it is so much fun on here uh, fun here on saturdays and sundays are almost equal 
it's pretty damn cool and it is but i know that i have added added many members because we have that availability i figured out a way to have pay someone a you know a minimum wage to be at the front desk and then give them a free membership just so we can be open yeah you don't need somebody with a level one to have open gym yeah that's a good point yeah you just you you put some you can do a trade for membership to have someone come and just sit here. Yeah, there was a point where we had the the coach would the coaches wanted to come in and train. I'm like, okay, so I'll tell you what, you're going to come in and train on Sundays, then open the gym, train. You know, if anybody new walks in, just you know, say hello to them. But be you don't have, but just be just have the gym open. Yeah, we make um, related to that. So we were worried about people who were coming in that would want to do a tour or sign up. And so what we did was we created a separate calendar. We use Calendly. We put it on our website and you have to book a time. We tell everybody that's new, you got to book a, and this is, we stole this from Two Brain Business. We have to do a no, no sweat intro, a tour. Because you know, we don't let people jump into class right away. That's too much of a burden on our coaches and it's not going to create a, that good of an experience for the new person. So we say, look, Book a tour. I don't care if you got experience or no experience. I want you to book a tour. You got to come and see our gym and talk to us and before you decide what you're going to do. Well, those tour times, we only make available when I know I have someone here that they can talk to. Yeah. That scarcity of that time creates demand, I think. But, but just set up a separate calendar for people to come talk to you. If you're worried about someone coming in and seeing the gym with just a coach in their training by himself. Yeah. But be open. Be open seven days a week. Um, I think that is super important to being a successful affiliate. So that's, th- I've only three that's things. Three. I'm like, that's three. three. You got two sorry. more. Sorry. <laughs> I did not think that this would go this long. But I'm this gone. is good though. This is, yeah. this is some important stuff that, you know, kind of highlights why we've yeah. been as successful as we are. Like you yeah. said, the end of 2022, we had the best month of our career of our the yeah. gym. Yeah. This is how, <laughs> yeah, all this stuff. This it is, is important and just focus on this. Not chasing down, you know, members that split. You know, yeah. not, you know, not just not, making it better. Not here. focus on one, one, one relationship with one coach. No, just keep, yeah. just focusing on these five things. And the next one is, and this one's important. And this is one. This one's contentious. We talked about this last week. Is having progressions in your programming. Yeah, and this is not a sales pitch for for PRs all day though. If you want to check them out, check them out. But I don't care. Well, I do care. Sugar bot. But 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean. If, if everyone that's doing programming knows how to put in progression, strength training progressions yeah. or gymnastic progressions. Should. I'm not saying that that produces better fitness. Um, uh, although I will say um, for a large group of members, a large community, I would argue that it, that it will produce better fitness over time than mm-hmm. doing GPP for the reason we talked about last week. Watch our podcast last week if you want to know what those reasons are. But what it does as an affiliate owner for me is it creates, it shows progress. Um, it's very visceral. It's, it's, it's immediate feedback, like literally within weeks. They're going to come in. They're going to start um, your workouts. Your work, and if your workouts include strength training progressions, within, within two weeks, three weeks, they're going to be doing more than they did. Yep. If you're just doing GPP, they may or may not see or feel that progress. And, and, the, and why that's important is because the physiological changes that really get people engaged where they say, oh, shit, my T-shirt fits different. Oh, oh, I'm starting to get abs or I'm starting to lose weight. Those changes, everybody knows in the CrossFit world, those things take a long time. Yeah. It can be months sometimes, mm-hmm. especially if they have no muscle mass and they start adding muscle mass, they gain weight. That's almost the worst. It's, uh, yeah. It's scary for women. Yeah. They're like, oh, shit, I'm gaining weight. That's not what I wanted. But then it comes down to like, well, how do your clothes fit? Like, if you're gaining weight, are your pants fitting a little better? Right. Like, are you moving better? Are you feeling better? Like, right. there's a lot of different but, metrics. Well, I understand, yeah. right? But again, I know you do, those, yeah. are th- those are things that you have to yeah. explain as a coach exactly. to that individual. They're not going to go, oh, but my, you yeah. know, I'm moving better and, <laughs> and I'm feeling better. No, bullshit. Everyone's going to be like, I don't see it. Yeah. But they do see a an increase in weight on the barbell. Mm-hmm. They do see a better um, clean. Or being able to link toast bar, or, or being able to link toast bar, or pull unders. Yes, they do see those things, yeah. and when they can go up to a PR board and write it down, yeah, it, it, it's really what I have been doing is working. Yeah. Then 
six weeks, um, two months, three months down the line, when they start losing weight, when they start getting ripped, when they start getting muscle, when they start feeling better, when they start, you know, picking up their kids and going, oh, shit, mm -hmm. I couldn't do this before. When they do all of those things, then they'll be like, that, that's like the double stack. Yeah. It's fantastic. So with, with that, would you say like um, following progressions, but also having a PR board so that that way there's a, a, a physical place, not just like on the social app, but a physical yes. place that's in public view. Because I mean, that's cool, right? Yeah. You get to go hit the ball, bell, your name's on the board, and it stays up there to show off your success. Right. Yes. Um, it, it, that is part of it. Yeah. You, you, you need to have that. And I'm glad that we've been very disciplined in doing that. We, for a while there, we got away from it. And, but the last five, six years we've been doing yeah. it, it's outstanding. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that includes also a sugar water beyond the yes. whiteboard, something else yes. where they can, where they can put their results in there. Because what's cool about sugar water, you PR and it gives you a little, mm. it gives you <laughs> these confetti come when you put it into the sugar water app, it gives you a little confetti thing. Congratulations on your PR. I've had that a couple of times. I'm like, oh no, no. I like I, yeah. I can feel the I can feel what is it, the dopamine? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get a little dopamine hit. <laughs> feel the dopamine and at the same time, when you have it logged into something like that, from a coach's perspective, you can look and because not everybody feels comfortable to go up on the board. And right. It, you know, we always try to encourage it, but even on Sugar Watt, it shows up or be on the whiteboard, right. it shows up. You can see that they are being successful and that you are on the right track. Yes. So progressions in your programming, add them in. And it will, it's one more hook in your, in your members if to keep, them, keep them coming back. So, because it, it makes a statement to them that what they're doing is working. And then they'll see the results later as their clothes start to fit better, as they lose weight, as they are able to do more things around the house, that those types of things. The last one's a bit different. Um, probably most people wouldn't guess what the last one is. I thought about this. I went back and forth on a couple of different things as to what I think is most important. But I think one of the things that has separated Diablo from uh, from other affiliates and has helped us grow is being able to capture other family members, mm -hmm. the spouse, the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that. We've got a family environment. Look, we, you know, Yvonne and I have been married, you know, more than thirty years. So that you know, obviously, you know, that goes throughout the community yeah. right people uh, people people see that and, they, and i think they they lay in it and it helps define our or it helps set a tone for our community but that beyond that um the, the biggest reason why we we get family members in here so they can live this life progression together. yeah but you know why you know what the biggest reason is why why they come why is that pricing uh price the break the break yeah we give we or, or the spouse or partner is half off. I was going to say, otherwise they, they're both bought into it yeah. and they get both get progress through that and, way. And they've got to be, and it's got to be a partnership. Yeah, it's got to be married or living together. Yeah, living together. Right, and you know, no bro, you know, no two bros that are you know having a bit have a room. Yeah, no, they got to be partners. Yeah, um, and we give them the spouse half off. A um, couple of different reasons. When you think about how much a family has to pay. Um, you know, paying two full memberships and, and, and uh, there's a lot of, um, if there, well, there's not a lot, but there's a couple of the top, uh, consultants to affiliates, business consult, affiliate consultants out there say, don't do that. You're giving them full of the same value, same, same service that you're giving to another member. Why would they pay less? The reason is, is I, I do take, uh, the economic consideration as a family, when you're if you're paying twice as you're you're paying two membership fees, that's a lot of money going out the door. Mm -hmm. Here's the other thing that we found out. So you give the spouse half off. There's an incentive there to bring the spouse. Yep. Um, it's less of a financial burden. When the spouse is going, you know, the other partner is likely to stay mm -hmm. longer. So you get more longevity. So you get that membership longevity, which I think is really important as an affiliate owner. Um and then the other thing is, is in terms of a, an affiliate, both spouses don't come as often. It's yeah. rare that they both. You know, there's a few, especially if they've got kids. Yeah, there's a few of them in here that come that where we know, like, and yeah. I think of like uh, Brian and, Brian uh, and Teresa, Teresa yep. right? Amy and Min. Mm -hmm. uh, there's mm -hmm. a there's a number of them that that come or are competitive athletes that have spouses. You know, they come that much, but for the most part, they don't. Like I think of Andra and Nicole, Nicole mm -hmm. Rogers and Andra. Mm -hmm. Andra comes when 
you know, periodically. Yeah. When he wants to come, he works out on his own at home, but he wants to be able to come from time to time. Yeah. And do class with Nicole. Yeah. And uh, and so it, that's the that's the majority of couples is what they do. You usually have one spouse that's into something else, running, yeah. you know, other types of fitness, and they want, but they want to come from time to time with their spouse. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris McCreary and uh, Sharon, Shannon Okada. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. And, and, and that's why you do it because but when you get the family in, you get them longer. Yeah. And then any additional family members, kids, we also give that same rate. We give half off for the kids. We've got, you know, I think of Jared, it's Jared mm -hmm. and, and Kennedy, Kennedy and, and Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. Right. He's got three kids. You know, there's, there, there's multiple people here that have three yeah. or four family members here. That's a huge amount of money going out the door for a gym membership. Mm -hmm. But Having family members here creates a family environment in the gym and it makes, and let me tell you what, a family environment in the gym creates a, it makes it a, I want to say a safer place for your, it's where people want to be like, with the, and, and, and I think especially women, they don't want to go to gym, feel like they're, they're, you know, they're going to get, you know, 10 DMs the next day yeah. from, from bros in the gym. Mm -hmm. They, they want to come here and they want to be able to train and not have to worry about those things. Mm -hmm. They want to come here and train to train. And that's what we're here to do. When you create a family environment, that is more likely to go down. It's almost, it, it also creates a really stronger community. Well, right? sure. Like, that's right. Especially when we come into like some of our events. That's right. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's what I want for my family. Yeah. Right. I want my kids to be able to come in here and, and, you know, eventually be doing class yeah when look, they make, get older but look, make no make no mistake people meet people here yeah. there's very few places in this world where people can meet people yeah. you know in a face-to-face -face environment human environment we've had i think now 13 couples yeah. meet here yeah. that went on to get married i met my wife here right. 10 years ago <laughs> <laughs> right. no, 11 years yeah. ago at this point right it's uh yeah and i I've, I've actually i've actually married one of them i was the you know student, oh, that's student, right. student <laughs> as a minister of one of them but for whitney but, right? and that's they, and i always tell people like if there's nothing else that i did i'm standing in front of god at the you know when i'm dead i'm like <laughs> hey we did that <laughs> <laughs> you know so we uh yeah we did but but creating that family environment, yeah. I think, is super important. Yeah, and and you do that through pricing. Give the spouse a discount. We give fifty percent. Mm -hmm. And it and could I could we have got more? Sure. Would they have stayed as long? Nope. Yeah. And I, I got 15, 16 years of data to show you. Yeah. So those five things: clean gym, quality coaching, open gym, and lots of hours, lots of availability. Um, progressions, progressions. In your, progressions in your programming and a yeah. PR board and then uh, uh, good pricing for spouses for families family family That's friendly it. I just gave away the secret to the yeah secret to success for Phillips. you don't need to do it's gonna be else. a few little blips from there fire sure. fire your mentor fire your mentor and do those five things but it, it, it's your, and, and I say that listen and mentors are awesome yeah. um, but I will tell you when you when you're deeply mired in a in an issue with a member that is that did recently left you or is thinking of leaving you and it's and it's emotionally tearing at you you're thinking fuck am i doing the right thing as an affiliate owner why am i doing this you know my best members leaving take a look at that list yeah and focus on that list don't focus on that one relationship yeah focus on these things and keep doing them over and over and over again and it'll come your way yeah um happy new year matt Oh, right on. Thank you, dude. Um, with it, it's interesting because that's uh, Matt's on, and yeah, because I, I, I wanted to talk about the what we're focusing on in 2023, yeah, in the new year. And and I do think about things to focus on. I do get rejuvenated at the beginning of the year, despite my cynicism about saying Happy New Year to people. That every day is the you know today's the same as it was. I think you know. I think too, like coming off of the the holiday season. I mean, going from Thanksgiving right. well, all the way through is. Christmas, the New Year. I mean, there's so much stuff. There's so many different distractions, distractions, and things pulling you away for family functions, a holiday party, whatever the case is. The New Year is a chance to kind of like, like you said, rehone in and just reevaluate everything. And, and I think like sharing those top five tips is, is gold yeah. for other affiliates out there that are looking to, you know have a direction yeah thank you and i think uh so here's what we're going to focus on for the year um first of all i'm going to continue the for me for diablo this is for diablo just mm -hmm. for 2023 
One is the gym improvement projects. I got a couple more improvement projects I want to do. We're getting, uh, we, we got our sauna in. Um, and if you want to know, uh, um, what the brand is, I'll, I'll, I'll put it somewhere or you can DM me and I'll give you the brand name. It's pretty cool. It's full spectrum sauna, but anyway, we're getting, uh, the ice barrels coming. So we're getting nice. an ice barrel with a chiller. Can't wait. <laughs> And then, um, so, and then I've got a couple of other projects I'm going to do. I got painting projects and we need to freshen up the paint in here. But moving around all the, all the jerseys. Oh yeah. The CrossFit moved, games, moved, jerseys. Moved, 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 I took out all the CrossFit games. We have 50, I was going to say, how many? Did you count them all? No, there's, I think it's like 56, 56 jerseys. Damn. Yeah. And hanging. And I, you know, I, I started that project thinking, no big deal. You know, I'll just <laughs> take them out, hang them. And then I realized, oh crap. You got to find space. Dude, find them. space. But it was also leveling them. Yeah. And, and then set and then lining them all oh, up. Oh, yeah, lining them all up. When you have multiple pictures, one or two pictures, fine. But when you have like six or seven pictures that you're going to put next to each other, yeah. every, it's like spacing between them. And then especially with the level. different size and shirts. Then, and then both sides of the wall has to, you have to start equally. So yeah. you got to do the so math. Centered. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> what a pain in the ass. But anyway, that project. So we moved those out. And it looks great. I've got a lot of good compliments from people like, I like how seeing the jerseys out and about. Oh, uh, good. It's really cool. Yeah. Cause they see them more yeah. now. Yeah. And then, um, so that's neat, and then we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna get some other pictures up, and but I have some improvement projects that I'm doing around the gym, and those are those are healthy for me too. I like doing that. I, I you know I come here, you know, six days a week, sometimes seven. Oh, I, I like change it. of scenery. <laughs> change of scenery is so nice, and and when things are fresh and new, it makes it feel so much better. Um, so it's it's partly for me, and it's and it's also for our members. It goes back to that kaizen. Yeah, constantly improving. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so we're focusing on that. So I'm going to get those done and then accessory classes, um, and programs and, um, that we're working on. One of them is, and Matt Schindel Decker jumped in there. It was, uh, um, we're working with Matt to create a juvenile detention program here at Diablo, where we would bring in, um, kids who are in the juvenile, uh, probation system and on probation as a alternative outlet for them, hopefully paid for by the county or state. Mm -hmm. So we're working with a local uh, um, superior court, court judge system, yeah. who knows knows and understands the program. She's helping us um, gain uh, get some traction to get this program up and running. So we're we're doing that. Um, so that's one of the focuses. Where I'm gonna I want to get that program up and running. We have our current program also that we're doing in the evening with the Phoenix Org. And if you haven't done, if you haven't hooked up with these guys yet, um, go to the Phoenix.org. We offer classes in the evening. The last class of the evening is available to the Phoenix.org members who are um, essentially uh, people who are in recovery from substance abuse. It provides them a fitness outlet. So they've got all these fitness organizations and gyms that they've partnered with, Phoenix Group. So if you're a member of Phoenix Group, you're in recovery, you can choose from their group of gyms. So Diablo CrossFit's one of those gyms here in our area. And we get three, we have three or four members that come in the evening and um, are using CrossFit as their new healthy addiction. Yeah. Do, do, uh, Dan, uh, Danville CrossFit, Dusty's gym is going to. Is he jumping on? Yeah, too? he's jumping awesome. on too, which is cool. That's great. Um, so that, that there's that. And then the other thing, um, that I want to focus on in this year is continue with, um, our coach career development and helping our coaches maximize their potential, um, surrounding clinics, um, private custom programming, mm -hmm. and then, uh, and then private coaching, yeah. increasing their, a lot of our members eat. Look at the program that Sandy did at the end of the year, which was when she told me she wanted to do it. I thought it was <laughs> random and unusual. I didn't have doubts because I did not. I didn't have, <laughs> I well, I didn't, I mean, I didn't have any. I mean, it, I, I had a little bit of doubt because I'm like, OK, it's like this is spur of the moment. Yeah. She told me she wanted to. She said uh, she said, I want to run a, an endurance program, endurance training, a six week endurance training program. Was, I don't even know where she got the idea from. She's oh, I don't know. She's well, only got a few years. Well, no, of no, 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 no. She has a, no. I, I'm not saying she doesn't have the experience to do no, it. No, no, no. Or the education or the sophistication. Uh, yeah, like okay. Sandy knows. Like yeah. if there's one person out there that knows how yeah. to do it. It's Alessandra Pacelli for sure. But the just the timing of it, like end of the year, like what? 
and what what would make you think that members would want to do this at the end of the year a, a six week program mm -hmm. and we really only had like a one week to announce it and get it out there yeah and she had 15 people pay her almost 200 dollars to per person to do a six week program and she basically wrote their programming yep and it was only two classes with her yeah. one class to start where they tested and went through some skills training then a second class where she tested them mm -hmm. and the results were unbelievable. It's kind of nice to end the year with that. You yeah. know, it's the same reason why we finished off the year with the deadlift after yeah. basically three months of prepping into it. Yeah. It's a, she, it's a good success. She had point. a 30 on average, a 30 to 40% improvement. It's awesome. In aerobic capacity as measured by Watts. Mm hmm. Um, in a, a, on a, tw in a 20 minute test. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was, so did they improve their aerobic capacity by 20%? Not necessarily. I think that most of them improved their aerobic capacity. If I had to guess probably anywhere from 10 to 25%, mm -hmm. but what they improved was their, the knowledge and how to use it. Right. And their, and yeah, their, and their ability to suffer, right. Yeah. At higher capacity. Yeah. Really cool. And everybody raved about it. But anyway, I want to, so I want to, I want to do more of those types of things because mm -hmm. our members loved it. They did it. Yeah. And now there's more members, of course, who want to do it. And she's also done other clinics too with you well, know, gymnastics, right. the bar muscle ups, the ring muscle. Ups. Yeah. But there's dude, a lot of opportunity out there for coaches to, you know, highlight their skills and share it with the rest of the community. And speaking of hooks in your members, the better your members get, even if you give up a hundred percent of the income, mm -hmm. the better your members get it's with one of your coaches are doing something here, the more they're going to associate it with their membership that they're paying in them. Yeah. A lot more likely they are to stay. They're not going to want to leave. No, they're not going to want to leave because they got, now they got this, they can't wait to do these. Um, uh, everybody did this endurance test, but I can't wait to do some of these longer Metcons. So there's a social atmosphere that's bringing them here and keeping well, them here. But then there's also the, the evidence-based fitness progress right. that's happening too. Yeah. And let me tell you what, the, the social part of it is reinforced because they all yeah. got together and yeah. did their test together. Yeah. And it was celebrate just, it together. Yeah. But anyway, there's a number of things that we're going to, I'm going to focus on for our coaches to help again, create more opportunities for our coaches to develop a really meaningful income. Yeah. And the more they can do that, the more likely my members are to stay mm -hmm. and keep, um, keep their memberships going. And at the same time, it's not even they're So they're staying they're getting better, but the fact that they're getting better is also going to help them improve their function of their training. Sure. Because they're going to become more competent with the yeah, skills. Yeah, they're going to be better, better class members. Well, better class members, but they're also going to be less injury prone because well, they're moving right. better, right? Yeah. Like yeah. that's, I mean, like that's kind of the way I see it is from a, a programmer or a coaching right. standpoint. I want yeah. to see these people move well because a PR is a PR. It's just personal record. But at the same time, a PR shows that they're making progress and they're not going to make progress and constantly make progress if they're moving improperly, that's like right. if they're breaking down early or they're compensating, that's where like these clinics and even private sessions have a chance to not just provide an ex, um, an added income for coaches, but also provide that member with better movement so they can improve their longevity of this fitness journey. Yeah, that's awesome. It's true. Yeah. Interestingly, and the like, if I think of three members that were injured recently that have taken them out of class or like had them scale back on class it was three members that were doing stuff on their own mm -hmm. <laughs> either which is something we're going to get into here in a second <laughs> right here's <laughs> some sport they were doing or some training softball is a big one yeah softball basketball those are Bas some big basketball, ones that are... ba basketball took out uh or no it was ankles soccer soccer took out uh eric albertoni with his shoulder <sighs> soccer dislocated his shoulder. Was he yeah. okay? um I, I i don't i'm not sure how it happened Maybe down yeah it sucks yeah injuries and are no the, fun but injuries are no fun. But in, in the random sports to do that but then i've had members that have injured themselves just doing bench press that was not prescribed anywhere yeah but decided to do bench press with dumbbells which we do bench press but it's right. all part of the progression <laughs> yeah, it's all part of the progression so um you know give our coaches more opportunities to make our member be members better and make them healthier that's that's the third focus that i have for the year yeah. Anyway, so and then on to one of the things I did want to briefly touch upon because we've we talked a lot about the intramural open last week. This week, uh, Diablo is uh, we're organizing, we're going to get team captains this week, we're going to pick our team captains. 
Um, I'm starting to ramp up the uh, signups for the open registration for the open. Um, I want to now um, uh, talk about if we could uh, pre-open programming, mm -hmm. you know, our masters or, you know, they want to do every time they get together. Now they want to yeah. do an open workout, which is great. But uh, uh, I think the approach that we're taking at Diablo for the open from now until the open, which is February 16th. 16th. Um, I kind of like what we're doing for the week. Yeah. And I thought it'd be good to describe how we're approaching programming so that other affiliates um, might um, want to think about something similar. Mm -hmm. So with this uh, progressive programming, um, you know, like we've talked in the past, the year is about building up, uh, you know, your work capacity across broad time, little domain. And in this next six weeks, we're basically just kind of refining and fine tuning the little details. So when the open does come, we're prepared. Right. And we've structured the week different from how we've done it in the past. Right. In the past, like I try to keep somewhat of a GPP format. So the primary or secondary lift does vary on the day. So mm -hmm. that way it, it hits more members. It doesn't, it's not like I can only come on Monday. So if we're doing Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, we're still getting some exposure of that movement pattern for that member. Right. Um, now, as we go into the open, we know that the workout is for us here at Diablo, we're going to be doing a Friday night lights. So we know Friday is the workout day. Um, the workout gets announced on Thursday. So what does that, how does that make us structure the week? Right. Because yeah. we want we want people to be set up and for success. Right. So we're starting off Monday. We're going to be doing a lift Tuesday. We're going to be doing a skilled lift. Um, Wednesday is going to be kind of a monostructural, like coming closer to the open. Um, right now, we're doing another lift. We're doing more barbell cycling. Yeah. So, for example, Monday, we've got our primary strength, which is a varied lift, skilled right. lift. Right? right. Snatch, clean and jerk, whatever it is. Tuesday, we're doing gymnastic skills. Yeah. With an EMOM format. So we're building up our intensity, going from 20 on, 40 off for a few rounds, and then progressively going to an EMOM and then ending with a, a wad. Right. And I'll talk about why we're doing it like that later. Um, Wednesday, barbell cycling, becoming more efficient with the bar. Thursday is our monostructural skill gymnastics. Basically, we're using a lot of biking on that day. Yeah. Take the volume out of it. So when we go in on Friday, we're rehearsing that Friday session with an old past open workout. Right. And the idea of that is to basically kind of get everybody prepared mentally from their nutrition, from their sleep. If they need to take, if they know they're going to go into that workout and kind of hit it as if it is the 2023 open, they can take that, that Thursday off. So by front loading the first couple days in the week and taking that Thursday off, they can come in on Thursday on Friday and really hammer it out. When we get into the actual open, you're going to see a little shift with that Thursday being more like a true monostructural day. Yeah. Right. So really trying trying to dive that volume down. Yeah. And we're going to have our lifts earlier in the week. Right. So that way we have time to recover. So we, we really don't fresh. want people in the gym on Thursdays. And if they do come into the gym, we just want them moving. At least if they're doing the open, we don't yeah. want them. But if that's they're right. not, because not everybody is going to be able to do right, that's true. And, the, the, and there's a workout there. Like they can really push the there's workout. There's still going to be a good workout. It's just monostructural. Exactly. Now, when we get into um, the, 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 <laughs> the crunch time, <laughs> Right, right, right. This is where people start thinking, oh, it's the new year. The Open's six weeks away. Let me hammer everything into the next six weeks. This is a time where we want to think about refining our skills and not punishing ourselves with volume. Right. Right. So when we look at volume versus intensity, if you have a skill that you need to work on, double unders, pull-ups, whatever it is, pick a day that doesn't conflict with whatever the workout is that you're doing. For example, if we're doing a ton of running, don't just hammer down double unders, right? Because you need your you need those ankles to recover. Right. Um, if we're doing a bunch of pull ups, this is not the day to practice ring muscle ups, right? So kind of pick and choose which days you're going to be working on those skills. If it's after class, before class, or even set up a time with a with a coach to do a private session to really focus on individual what you need to work on. Um, so those are the couple things that I would highly recommend. Just you know, the 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 you know what I take from this is you know you're basically your primary 
strength training and fitness training is close to being done. It's pretty much done. You're not going to make that many gains between now and the open, which is why. And, and if you try too hard to do that, you the risk is the too risk high. is yeah exactly. It's all about risk versus reward at this point. So now is the time. If you don't have double unders, you can probably do and, and or you or you have the physical capacity to do toes bar, physical capacity to do linked pull ups. Now's the time to practice those skills. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not that practice doesn't conflict with what the daily exactly. programming is. Yeah. And then Fridays will always be an open workout, so that we kind of get that mindset going right now of of doing an open workout. Um, I really like, you know, the, the, I looked at the programming this week and next week and, and I, I like what it is today, snatches and then a seven minute Metcon mm -hmm. with double unders, a, a couplet. And by the way, couplets are, um, get used to them, get used to them, <laughs> but in, in athletes, especially competition athletes, and you watch them, you guys know, in your affiliates, you watch them train yeah. competition athletes avoid couplets. Yeah. This is the time to start thinking about Metcons. No, don't. Don't just hammer down the, the volume in EMOMs. Right. It's time to go to that dark place in a Metcon. That's why. Which, that's why the athletes don't like me, the, the couplets. We've yeah. talked about this in the past. They avoid them because they know there's there's no place to hide in a yeah. couplet, especially it's if, it, if it's a couplet like today, wall balls and double unders. Yeah, for seven minutes. Everybody can do double yeah. unders. And you know, every all the athletes can do lots of double unders and yeah. lots of wall balls. So they know they're going to have to suffer. And they avoid it. They do triplets or they mm -hmm. do chippers. Mm -hmm. They do EMOMs because it gives you a chance to rest. Yeah. So kind of going back to the EMOM stuff, our skill for this month is, is basically honing in on those skills. Double yeah. unders, toes to bar, single leg squats, uh, bar muscle ups, all that stuff. We have dedicated time to practice that before class. And then we're doing it in an, like I said, an EMOM format where we have a timed, then a set rep scheme, and then a Metcon. So the idea of that is to learn how to pace into it. Yeah. Right. How many times we start an open workout and we say, hey, establish that first round, see what it's going to feel like, find your breathing rhythm, find a rhythm that you can maintain and sustain right. for the time frame. Here's a 15 minute workout that's starting off with a couple rounds of an EMOM as kind of a rolling start. So there is no score to that. So might as well practice. Right. We're practicing the skill. Then we're going to implement it with a couple other open type skills. And then we're going to find ourselves going hard in the last like six minutes or something like that. Right. That's a, that's actually a cool format of workout. So we, uh, Jamie sets it up so that we do an EMOM for, first few rounds and then we go into a four time workout of the same movements those are those are awesome um, because then you you know how you're going to feel you know how you can pace you learn how to pace um so those are things to think about in the open your your members encourage them this is the time to practice maybe set up an open workout once a week ideally on the day that you're going to do it during the during the open for the three weeks during the open set it up now get them preconditioned for that um, avoid the, avoid the, the heavy, heavy one rep maxes and the heavy progressions there. Again, you're not going to get a lot stronger between now and the open, which you can get better at of the skills and the ability to suffer. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. No, I like where we're going with this and I, and I think it's great advice for, for other affiliates as well. Um, anything else? Uh, road royalty. Oh yeah, a couple hope. weeks. <laughs> yeah, let's put a commercial. Talk, talking there. about prep for the open, yeah. here's an opportunity to kind of practice and rehearse yeah. that scoring aspect, right? right. It's, so it's four weeks. It starts January 12th, which is in a week and a half. Um, sign up roadroyalty.com. Um, get get registered. A workout will be released on Thursday. It's just a rowing workout. Um, you have until Monday to do it to to submit your score. There'll be there's age groups, um, and there's what's really cool is we had we do it by height. So um, there's height categories, um, which which distinguishes is a distinguishing um, separator um, on the rower. Taller athletes do better, so we have a tall class and a and a standard class, which mm -hmm. which works out for everybody. And gives everybody an opportunity to perform well against people like themselves. So sign up Road Royalty. That'll give you some good conditioning as well for the, and it, it, for the just open. Good conditioning from the monostructural side. Yeah. You got multiple scores, so you can kind of play around with your strategies. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you learn how to use the ERG. You learn how to use the ERG because, I mean, we've seen it in past open. Um, also, just kind of rehearsing that dark place, right? Yeah. Well, just yeah. One and done. Got to score it. Yeah. So. Yeah, the rower can be awful. Yeah. Right on, guys. Happy New Year, Bruce. Yep.
and uh check us out at um at pierre's a day is the youtube and then we're on apple podcast now and then yep. you can find us also on the rss.com site too we'll have um some information on how we're doing our intramural um open on uh, pierre's all day blog too cool so cheers Thanks. Thanks. Here, guys <laughs>